Today we are going to take a look at the Subaru Forester and show you a secret menu or at least a menu that a lot of Subaru drivers may not know exists. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos just like this, sharing tips and tricks, things that you need to know as a Subaru owner. So if you enjoy that type of content, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below. And as always, if you guys have any questions, leave those down in the comment section below. What I'm about to show you guys is actually applicable to other Subaru models as well. So not just the Forester, we also have the Impreza, the Crosstrek, and the Ascent that share a very similar design here. So in order to access this hidden menu is actually in this center digital display. And the way you access that is through these keys right here. These are a little confusing at first, but these keys have uh, an up arrow, a down arrow, and a select key that says I slash set on it. You can use this to toggle through different vehicle information. Most people are probably familiar with this. You know, you've got your tire pressure, your fuel economy, digital speedometer, different information like that. And then you see this screen right here that says pull and hold the I slash set switch for menu. So if you pull and hold that center switch, this will bring you into a menu. So there are multiple different settings that you can adjust within this menu. I'm gonna go over that here in detail. Starting out under screen settings, this is the first menu. We're gonna select that and we're gonna go into the menu screen or the welcome screen. On the welcome screen, you can turn this on or off. This is the little message that pops up on the display here telling you uh, welcome. So we're gonna leave that on right now. We're gonna go back. And guys, I'm just using this right here. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but up, down, and the select right here. So we're gonna go back to uh, the goodbye screen. Again, same thing here. You can turn that on and off. We're gonna leave that on. Uh, gauge initial movements. So you can set up the gauge movement to swipe on initial startup like this, or you can set it up to not swipe on initial startup. If you wanna turn that off where it doesn't do that, you can turn it off within this screen right here just by selecting it and clicking it off. The next menu item is your units. So you can change this to miles per hour or kilometers, depending on which country you are in or which you prefer. Tire pressure, same thing here, PSI or KPA. The next one is languages. You can switch between English, Spanish, or French or you can go back out of this screen settings menu altogether. So we'll go back out of that, go back over to warning volumes. That is the second menu on the list here. So we can select that. You can change this to be louder, medium sound, or minimum if you want it lower. Go back out of that. Your eyesight, that has to do with these cameras up here. If you guys wanna see a more in-depth video on what these do, you can click on the YouTube card above. I talk about that in more detail, but we can change the lead vehicle acquisition sound. So that is the sound that it makes whenever a car is detected in front of you. You can turn that on and off. The lead vehicle moving monitor function, that has to do with uh, when your vehicle is at a complete stop, and say traffic starts moving forward, but your vehicle hasn't started moving forward yet, the EyeSight cameras will identify that and give you a gentle reminder here on the dash. The next option is your cruise control acceleration characteristics. This has to do with how quickly your car accelerates after a lead vehicle gets out of the way. So with the EyeSight cameras up there, if you set your cruise control at 60, a car in front of you slows down to say 30, when they get out of the way, your car is going to accelerate back up to the 60 miles an hour. And you can adjust how quickly that accelerates with these options right here. So we click into that. There's level three, which is standard. Comfort is gonna be much more gradual. And eco is gonna be very slow acceleration. So those are the options you have. Uh, you also have dynamic, which is going to be the quickest acceleration. So usually I set this at standard or comfort to gradually accelerate versus flooring it as soon as that car gets out of the way. The next option allows you to change the side of the road that you anticipate driving on. Obviously here in the United States, we drive on the right side of the road, so we have it on the right. But if you live in a different country that drives on the left, you can do so here. And we're back at the go back option. So we'll go back here. Next to EyeSight, we have RAB, which stands for reverse automatic braking. Not all Subarus are equipped with reverse automatic braking. This has to do with the 
system in the back, whenever you put it in reverse, you'll actually see RAB listed right here, which you can turn this feature on and off right here. This will automatically apply the brakes if somebody is behind you. So that's a nice safety feature to have. You also have this audible alert right here where you can turn that on and off if somebody is behind you. In order to adjust the sonar alert, the audible alert that you hear, you just click on RAB and then you select sonar audible alarm. You can turn this on and off right here and keep it permanently off. Otherwise, you can click and hold this P icon or button here and it will actually turn it off temporarily. Now, whenever you restart the engine and you turn it right back on, that will be back on by default unless you change it up here on the center display. Next to RAB is our vehicle settings. If we select this, the very first option on here is the keyless entry system. That has to do with your proximity sensor in your key fob. So if we select the keyless entry system, that will take us into the adjustments here. So the first one is audible signal. So you can turn this on and off. This has to do with uh, getting in and out of the car. It will make an audible sound when you're just a beep whenever you're getting in and out of the car. The next one is your hazard warning lights. These will flash whenever you're getting in and out of your car. Uh, the driver door unlock. So this allows you to adjust the doors to automatically only unlock the driver's door or automatically unlock all of the doors. So we can change that here by uh, selecting driver's door only or all doors. We're gonna go back. The next one is your rear gate slash trunk. Same setup here. You can automatically uh, unlock just the rear door with your keyless entry key fob, or you can unlock all doors with your keyless entry key fob if you go to pull on the trunk handle. We're gonna go back out of this, and the next option is our defogger. So you can set this up to continuously run or to run for only a certain amount of time, 15 minutes. After that, we have our interior lighting settings. These will stay on based on the amount of time we set whenever we open the door and close it. So the way that works is when you get out of your car and close it, you're walking away, your interior dome lights will stay on for whatever amount of time you set on the timer here. So we have it set at 10 seconds. So at approximately 10 seconds, that will shut off. But if you wanna keep it on longer, you can do so by selecting 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or you can even turn it completely off if you don't want your dome lights to stay on when you exit your car. Auto door lock and unlock allows you to automatically lock your doors or unlock your doors based on different vehicle functions. So we'll hop into this. For the auto door lock function, there are a few different options. We've got vehicle speed, which I believe once you reach 12 miles an hour, your doors will automatically lock. If you shift into or out of park, your doors will automatically lock and you can turn it off. If we go back over to the unlock function, the auto door unlock, we can uh, switch this to uh, shift into or out of park, similar to the lock function. We can have it auto unlock when we turn the ignition off or when the driver's door is open. And then lastly, you can turn it off. We'll go back out of this. Your auto light sensor has to do with the sensor up here that will automatically turn on your headlights when it gets dark out. So you can change the sensitivity. If it's on max, whenever it gets just dark for a, a few seconds, like if you go under a tunnel, it's gonna turn those on. Put it on mid, it's less sensitive, and low, it's going to be the lowest sensitivity, so it's gonna take longer for your lights to come on. Welcome lighting is similar to your dome lights, except it has to do with your headlights. So whenever you are approaching your vehicle, when you hit the unlock button on your key fob, your lights will uh, turn on for a particular amount of time that you set and stay on, or you can have them turn off where they don't turn on at all. And just like you can turn on your headlights automatically when you unlock your door, whenever you lock it, you can have your headlights stay on for an extended period of time as well with the leave time setting. So you can do 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or 90 seconds to leave your lights on, or you can completely turn them off as soon as your car is locked. The one touch lane changer has to do with your left stock over here. So you can turn your blinker on and leave it on, or if you just gently tap down, it will blink three times consecutively. Now, if you don't like that one touch feature, then you can turn that off to where when you do that, it doesn't do the three consecutive blinks. 
here is what it looks like if you turn that off. See, it doesn't blink at all. It just, you have to go all the way down. It doesn't just hold it there. But really the uh, most convenient way is just to leave that on. Under door mirror settings, if we select this, you can adjust your mirrors to where they will auto tilt whenever you put it into reverse. And that covers it for our vehicle settings. The last menu here is to adjust back to default settings. So if you mess something up in here, you adjusted something and you want to change it back or revert back to factory settings, you just click on the default settings and we click on yes. That will change everything back to your default settings. So that about covers it for the secret menu on this Subaru Forester, as well as those other models I mentioned. I hope you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.